welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to sit down and film again. It's been an entire week and I have been having withdrawals like crazy. Um, in case you are not on any of my other social media sites, I needed a little mental health break this weekend just to take some time off. These cases sometimes can really drain you and I felt like it was getting to me and showing in my videos. And then to top it off, my husband broke his hand on Sunday and he's been out of work and as a barber and the sole provider for our family it's kind of been a hectic time so I'm so happy to finally be sitting down and filming this video for you guys um, I had originally planned to have this up on Monday but as I said life happened so on that note we are going to go straight into today's video this is definitely a lesser known case it's definitely a smaller case but to me I honestly think it needs as much attention as possible so as usual share this video as many times as you can on whatever social media platform you have or if you don't want to share this video just at least share this story so other people can be aware and spread the word today's video is on david gibson smith and he unfortunately went missing on my birthday of this year so august 6 2017 from lisbon maryland this story is very confusing um, and very frustrating and there's a whole bunch of he said she said um, disagreements between the parents and the cops and the detectives and possible suspects it's it's a mess so I'm interested to see what you guys have to say so David had told his parents on Saturday August 5th that he was going to move in with a co-worker he had some previous issues with drug and alcohol abuse so he was staying with his parents for around nine months I think was the time frame given and the next big step was him moving out he had just bought a car um, he'd been nine months sober he'd only relapsed alcohol a handful of times but nothing to where the family was concerned at all anymore um, so this was seen as a great step he said he was moving out he was finally doing it he had a good job he was working steadily so it was the big weekend of him leaving so he left on the 5th of August at around 8 30 in the morning and he took two small suitcases with him and four boxes of shoes you can tell in pictures of him he's very particular about his appearance he took really good care of himself um, so I'm assuming that is filled with necessities and clothing and then his shoes obviously were kept in shoe boxes his mom said he had this thing about doing that however he did leave majority of his belongings at home so his parents thought that that indicated he would come back come and get more stuff so Doug David's dad kept in contact with David I think a couple of times during the day and even later on in the day he had texted him asking him if he had settled into his new home and he was comfortable and David said yes he said that he had settled in fine everything was great so the next morning on August 6th, Doug tried to text David again um, at around 7.55 in the morning. At this point, the parents assumed he was still local. Once again, he was moving in with a co-worker, so it was in the same city. Um, but there was no response back to the text message. I'm pretty sure they probably tried to call him as well because they soon realized his phone was dead or turned off. For the next couple of days, they still hadn't heard back from David, which was not very common. He was usually pretty good about getting back in touch with his parents, um, but keep in mind he was a 28-year-old adult, so it's not that alarming when someone doesn't respond for a couple of days. Um, but on the 8th, on Tuesday, they realized something was very, very wrong. They went to his work because they had no idea the name of his coworker, no idea the name of the person he was moving in with. Um, and they found out pretty quickly that David had not shown up for work and he also definitely did not move in with a coworker that weekend like he had said and even confirmed to his father on Saturday. The following day on Wednesday, the 9th of August, the parents received all of the telephone records. They pulled the whole entire thing to see what calls he'd been making, if there were any prominent numbers, or um, any activity afterwards so maybe you know he just hadn't called them back and they found out he had been frequently talking to between text and calling it two women it took roughly 24 hours for both of these women to contact the family back when they called them and that is when they found out that David had actually gone to Catonsville Maryland to meet with a woman and spend the weekend and or week I could not get those details solidified um, he planned to spend the weekend at least with this woman. I don't know the relationship, they're not releasing any information about this woman, but apparently what had happened is he had planned to spend the weekend with her. He left once again at around 8.30 in the morning. The drive from Piles Grove, New Jersey, which is where he lived with his parents, to Catonsville, Maryland, was about two hours, meaning he would have arrived around 10.30 in the morning. So he had all day Saturday with this girl. Except when he got close, I'm assuming something changed and she was not actually able to spend the weekend with him. 
um, in that case she did something kind of strange in my opinion and got him in touch with another woman who lived in Ellicott City which is about a 15 minute drive away from Catonsville, Maryland. The woman from Catonsville said that he could stay with the woman from Ellicott City for the weekend and I don't know if maybe he went there because he was just gonna spend the weekend with this one girl and then be able to eventually spend the rest of the week with the one from Catonsville. I'm not really sure. Like I said, the details on this are very, very minimal and it's a bunch of just speculation. So we're kind of going off not much here. So he easily could have gotten to Ellicott City around 11 o'clock. I'm sure he could have made stops, but that's just my own rough estimate. The girl that he met up with in Ellicott, he had only spoken to once. He had never met this girl face to face. I am completely unsure if he'd even met the original girl face to face. Once again, more details that I haven't really heard, but he had messaged this one girl or talked to this one girl from Ellicott City at least one time, but that is it. So for whatever reason, when he got to the woman's home in Ellicott City, her parents did not want him there at all. Um, I'm not sure if it was an originally that he, they didn't want him there or if something happened while he was there, um, but the woman from Ellicott City said that he did stay there overnight that Saturday night, so from the 5th that night into the 6th. He supposedly stayed with this woman in Ellicott City. So the next morning, Sunday the 6th, um, after he had supposedly stayed the night with this woman, she drove him in her car to her uncle's property, um, which was about, I think it was 20 to 25 minutes away in Lisbon. Um, it was the 2000 block of Woodbine Road, and it was just that. It was just a piece of land. Um, there were only abandoned cars, there was a hammock, a fire pit, a small pond, and a boat, and just a bunch of junk. Um, I'm assuming, since there were no buildings, that her uncle did not actually live on this property, but it did belong to him. And he didn't take his car. She drove him here to stay. And there, her reasoning for that is that her uncle would have been extremely upset had he known that this man was staying on his property and she didn't want to draw attention to it so they decided to not bring his car. She had even told David that if he saw her uncle that he needed to hide and stay completely out of sight. The girl claimed that she had been with him the entire day on Sunday and then left him there that night to stay. And that is the last time and she was the last person that we know of that has seen David. So when she left him on Sunday, she said that she told him she would be back. Um, she didn't really give any specifics. I don't know if she gave specifics to him because we can't ask him. Um, but she didn't return back until Wednesday. I do not understand for the life of me why she would have left him on the property until Wednesday. Um, she had left him Sunday night with no supplies, no food, no water, no nothing, and he had only taken a few belongings from his car. So he had no food, no way to leave, and she didn't come back for a couple of days. So she told the parents she came back on Wednesday to leave a tub of supplies. She said she left them there on Wednesday, came back on Friday, which is also the day she called the parents back, and saw that nothing had been touched. And she hadn't seen him on Wednesday, so she just kind of assumed he would get everything. So at this point, she hadn't even seen him both the times she went to check on him, which I would have been alarmed by. I mean, I would assume other people would be alarmed by. So that Saturday on August the 12th, the parents decided to meet her. When they got there, um, she showed them the contents of the tub that she brought, and that's when even more questions are raised because all she brought was a blanket, a Coleman lantern, and some magazines. So here we are again a week later, and she still didn't think to bring him food or water. They searched the entire property for 45 minutes and after not finding David or any of his belongings, parents asked her to call the police, which she willingly did, and the police showed up within 15 minutes. So another strange tidbit to the story is that within that 15 minutes, this girl decided to leave because she had to go to work for two hours. Um, so she left and the police got there and they immediately started an extreme search. They put on the National Missing Persons websites. Um, they brought in a helicopter with infrared. They brought in divers so they could dive the entire pond. Um, they had all different kinds of sonar equipment, submarine, like small submarines. They brought in cadaver dogs. They searched absolutely everywhere. They called hospitals. They called morgues. They called prisons. They called jails. They called everything in the tri-state area checking to see if they could find David anywhere and no one could locate him. Then 
both women showed back up to the property. Once again, it's unclear if they showed up together, which I would find very bizarre and suspicious, or if they just came back. But both women showed back up to the property and they both were interviewed separately. That same day, the police then also told the parents that they needed to take his car home. Um, according to the parents, their exact words were, we do not want you to leave a piece of David, a possible item of his, in the yard of a suspect. So at this point in time, they were considering at least the woman from Ellicott a suspect because they did not want David's property on their property. So the parents went and took the car and took it home. On Sunday, August the 13th, the sergeants called the family and said that they were handing the case over to the detective in charge of criminal missing persons, and that that detective would contact them soon. So once again, that leads us to believe that they did think there was possible criminal activity. The next day, that detective did call, and he was extremely unhappy that the parents had touched the car. Um, he said that it was a possible bit of evidence, it could be things inside the vehicle that they could need, so they sent state troopers out to the parents' house to process the vehicle. If I'm looking down at this next part, it's just so I don't mess up any of the times. So they decided then to go through phone records and see what his last conversations were like, last text messages, any timing for things. So he had texted his friend that he was originally supposed to meet with at 12.19 a.m. So that is on the 6th, so early, early, early Sunday morning, um, late Saturday night, technically. She returned his text at 12.21, and then at 12.36, she called him and they had a five-minute phone conversation. Nothing else happened on his phone until 4.10 a.m. Sunday, early, early on the 6th, and the woman from Ellicott City called him at 4.10 in the morning, the house that he was apparently staying at. They spoke for about two minutes. Only one other text sent to him on the day of the 6th is at 2.49 p.m. It, I guess, was of no importance and it was obviously not answered because the phone was not on. They searched the area. They did say that two items that would be with David were not found, meaning they were still on him. They haven't said exactly what it is. I'm going to assume it's probably his phone or his wallet. Um, but once again, that's just an assumption made by me. It's very possible that he just walked off of the property with his belongings. There's been no activity on his phone, no activity on his bank accounts, and absolutely no activity on social media as well. There were a ton of different leads, but every single one of them fizzled out. I even saw on a lot of the different Facebook pages between the police department and the Find David page, a lot of people have seen a homeless person that looks like him, but literally every single lead has fizzled out. Um, there is one family that does claim that they saw David walking on Woodbine Road, which would make a lot of sense. And this person was wearing jeans and a gray sweatshirt with a hood on it. Um, I guess, according to the parents, these people called into the police dispatch but never received a call back. So I don't know if the parents are working one-on-one -on -one with them. I'm not exactly sure, but they are currently working with this family to try to figure out if who they saw was David. Police then came and posted a statement on the case in late September that completely rocked everyone who was involved in this case's world. So the parents have been trying desperately to get their son's story out and they've had this page going up for a while now. And even though it's only been around two months. Um, they've done a lot of work to try to have him seen. They've printed off posters and their stories absolutely everywhere. They have a GoFundMe as well. And then the police came out and kind of threw this bizarre turn to the case that made a lot of people view David in a very negative light, which I find absolutely heartbreaking personally. So police released for the first time that David, according to information they had received, which I am highly assuming it is from the girl in Ellicott City, that David was using heroin the day before he disappeared. Um, this is when everyone following this case kind of found out that he had an issue with using drugs. The parents seemed to have wanted to keep this out of the spotlight, which a lot of people were angry about, which blows my mind personally. Um, the police said their statement in a very strange way. They used phrases like, um, he called a friend to drive him out to a piece of land, instead of, you know, saying that his he was staying with this girl and this girl was the one who came up with the idea to drive him there and leave him on this property. Like, they made it, they made it seem like he made all these really strange decisions. Um, they also came out and said that he was known for leaving for weeks or months at a time, which the parents were extremely upset about because that is false information completely. Um, he did travel places. I think he lived in Florida for a short period of time, but he never, even if he went somewhere, 
It was with purpose, and he kept in contact with his family. His father even said that five days is the longest he had ever gone without contacting his family. Um, and he even said there were times where he wouldn't have access to a phone or anything of the sort, so he would go to public libraries to get in touch with them through the internet, like Facebook or email or something like that. So um, the police kind of made it seem like he just randomly went to a random city, randomly called a friend to ask for help, and then, oh, by the way, he has a drug problem. So it infuriated a lot of people because it showed this whole other side to this story and the family was extremely upset. The mother had apparently commented back on this Facebook post and was extremely upset. It has since been deleted. There is a copy of it on Web Sleuths. I don't know how 100% true that is because it is Web Sleuths, but he really went to bat for her son. Um, she had had a meeting just the previous Tuesday before they released all of this information on Facebook. Um, and, you know, they had told the police that they were comfortable with them releasing that he did struggle with drug abuse and alcohol abuse in the past, but that he had been sober for nine months. Um, you know, they, they had said that they were fine with that, um, but the police seemed to be twisting the story in a way that made it support their theory, which is that he just ran away on a drug or alcohol binge. So this is where we really start getting into some of the theories. The mother is extremely suspicious of the woman from Ellicott City. Her story, if you think about it, is just very bizarre. Um, First of all, he didn't know this woman, so I don't know why he went over there. Um, he was only two hours away. If his plans changed, I'm not sure why he wouldn't have just gone home. Um, I do find that a little bit strange. Um, but like I said, maybe he just wanted to stay with this other girl for the weekend so that on Monday, when maybe the girl from Catonsville could see him, he could go and spend the rest of the week with her. I definitely see that as a possibility. You know, when he had left home, he had not packed all of his belongings. He packed as anyone would, going on a week-long trip if that was his plan, or if you're just me, pack half of my closet for like two days. So to me, you know, the police thinking, his belongings and packing that many belongings was bizarre. I just don't think you can really gauge that. Um, that's just my personal opinion. And if he did plan on going away for a while, um, even if it was for weeks or months like the police claim he does, I don't think his parents would have been so concerned so quickly. I mean, he left on a Saturday, they talked to him on a Sunday, and by Tuesday morning, they thought something was very, very wrong. If a parent was used to their son leaving for weeks or months at a time, um, Frequently in the past, I don't see why they would be so concerned so fast So that kind of totally dismantles the police argument that that's normal for him And when it comes back to him being in Ellicott City and going with that girl instead, he had a debit card with him um, He had just bought a car. He had a job. So I'm assuming he had money So I I don't understand why he wouldn't have just gotten a hotel for a couple of nights um, maybe he didn't have enough money for a hotel. Maybe this was just a very convenient solution. Um, the police said that at one point he was telling the girl from Catonsville that he was just going to sleep outside, and I guess that's when she suggested to go and meet up with her friend. But, you know, then again, that completely discredits the whole entire drug abuse thing that they're talking about, because if you are doing drugs, you need money for drugs. Um, they haven't released any information about money withdrawals or anything like that from his bank account, but I'm assuming... Um, you know, if he was planning on going on a drug or an alcohol binge, he would probably need his money, um, but they said there was no activity, so... And then if he didn't have enough money for hotel, how would he have enough money for heroin and a ton of alcohol? Um, it's just puzzle pieces are not coming together here. And that brings us back to the girl from Ellicott City. Um, if he went to her house and the parents did not want him there, I'm just wondering why. I have so many questions as to like, did they immediately not want him there or did something happen while he was there? According to the parents, she is a known heroin user. Um, you know, maybe she's living with her parents for the same reasons that David was. Maybe they're trying to get her off of the drugs. So maybe they saw David as a potential threat. Um, if he was using heroin that day, maybe he showed up on heroin and they freaked out and told him no. Um, it's just one big question, and then that could also discredit the entire needing money for drugs if she just gave it to him. Also possible that it was as simple as them not wanting a stranger in their home. I mean, he did not know this woman, he did not know this family, so that is also another completely understandable side of that story. Then that leaves me to his car being in their driveway. If they didn't want him there, what's the deal with this car? Like, why did they allow his car to be there for a week and just simply not question it? 
uh, they knew he had nowhere to go, which is why he was there to begin with, so why did they assume he suddenly had somewhere to go and it was without his vehicle? Like, that to me is just so bizarre that they just let his vehicle sit there for a week and didn't think anything of it. I also find it strange because the girl from Ellicott City had his car keys. Um, I mean, I kind of understand leaving his car there so the uncle doesn't see it. But, you know, he easily could have parked it somewhere on one of the roads. I mean, it's a very rural place if you look at Google Maps. You can see there's absolutely nothing there. There's a ton of different small little country roads. You could have parked it on the side by the grass and walked to the property. I just don't get why she would have needed to take his keys. Like, to me, that just doesn't really make any sense at all. And then to top it off, she left him there with absolutely no supplies, no food, no water, and didn't show back up for another three days. So that leads me to a couple of actual like solid theories that he possibly just walked off. So if she had dropped him off with no transportation, no food, no water, the mother did say that there were fresh empty bottles on the property. So maybe at one point he did at least have alcohol. I mean, not like that's gonna benefit in him in any way, shape or form, but what if he took I'm gonna be back as in her coming the next day, but she just totally spaced and didn't come back and he realized that and then decided to walk into town. You know, I checked Google Maps and it is a 28 minute walk from the 2000 block of Woodbine Road to the fire department, which could have been fast, easy help. And there were gas stations, liquor stores, like small food marts and different restaurants all around this area. So a 28 minute walk wouldn't be that bad. He easily could have been like, screw it, I'm walking, I'm gonna go somewhere. But then what happened to him after that? I'm assuming based on the direction that they were coming from in Ellicott City over towards Lisbon, they probably would have had to drive through that area as well. So I'm sure he was aware that it was there. Another thing is that that road is decently populated. It's not as in the middle of nowhere as a lot of people are assuming. There's lots of houses. Um, if you look here, you can see there's there's houses along the whole entire road. So how could he have decided to walk and somehow not be noticed by someone, which again brings me back to the family that possibly spotted him. I really do think that possibly could have been David. One thing that does lead me to possible drug use is the fact that he lied to his parents about where he was going. As much as that could have been just him not wanting them to assume he was going to do drugs and him wanting to go see this girl and go hang out with this girl, maybe he was worried they would immediately think that's what he was going there to do and wouldn't allow him to go so maybe he was lying to them to just get them to think he was taking a good step in his life or he was possibly lying to them because he didn't want them to have any idea that he planned on going somewhere to use drugs that weekend. I think both options are equally possible. This leads to the overdose theory that a lot of people seem to have that he possibly overdosed on heroin. Um, I was informed on the Nicholas Barclay video that after you have not done drugs in a very, very long time, that it's actually more likely that your next first use could result in an overdose because your body's not used to amounts of drugs that it used to take, but your mind assumes you can use the same amount. Um, so I do think it's quite possible that maybe he was on heroin. His parents said that that was not the type of drug he chose, but you know, once again, people don't always tell the truth. Kids don't always tell the truth to their parents. So it's very possible to me that maybe he, he did use heroin. He assumed he could use more than his body could handle. Um, maybe that's what they did this Sunday on the property. Maybe they hung out and used heroin and he overdosed and this girl absolutely freaked out. But in that case, where would she have taken his body? Like they searched the entire area. To me, like even this theory does not make that much sense. Maybe the girl freaked out. Maybe it wasn't his money that he used to buy this heroin. Maybe she bought the heroin and supplied it for him, in which case she could possibly be charged with providing drugs that killed someone. So maybe that's why he disappeared. But at the same time, I discredit that by the actions of the girls. Obviously, I wasn't there, but even the parents said that they were very willing to cooperate. They called the police for the parents. I mean, the girl voluntarily met the parents. She came back when she didn't have to. I mean, I'm sure they would have found her eventually, but she did come back. She did talk to the police. She did give them all the information that she could. So to me, that doesn't really seem like something someone would do if they were trying to hide something. Um, they might have more information, but I don't think it's to the extreme of he overdosed and I hid his body somewhere. But then again, all speculation, I could totally be wrong. There's also a theory that the uncle found him and the uncle did something to kill him. But again, let's think a little bit logically here. If you find someone on your property, I mean, I know there's some people who would say their first 
idea would be to shoot them. But chances are, if the uncle did find him, he probably just chased him off and maybe David ran. Maybe that's where he went. Maybe he got lost in the woods. I have absolutely no idea. Um, but I just don't think that's a very plausible thing as well. They searched the entire property. They didn't find blood. They didn't find bullets, like absolutely nothing. So I don't think that theory is likely at all personally. And then there's the theory that he was running away and had planned this entire thing to run away. Um, this to me is kind of a possible theory. Um, you know, he had been nine months living with his parents as a 28 year old male. As you can imagine, I'm sure that wasn't the best time of his life. Um, you know, he had come so far, but what if the pressure was too much? You know, he had just bought a car. He was starting picking up payments on his own. Um, he was working a stable job. You know, his parents were really trying to get him to move out to rent his own place, do his own thing, continue his life. Maybe, maybe he wanted to relapse. Maybe the pressure was just too much. Maybe he felt like he was going to disappoint his parents. So he just decided to say, screw it and run away. So, you know, maybe the original girl was planning to help him and then plans kind of went crazy and something along the lines went wrong. Maybe that's why she had his keys. Maybe that's why he didn't take his car because he obviously could be found so easily that way. Maybe she dropped him off there, but he was picked up by someone else. There were a couple of people on web sleuths that said that he had commented on someone's Facebook post saying he wanted to go out to like California. Um, he knew people in Florida that he could go to. Police are even searching the entire East Coast because they do think it's possible that he did run away. Um, I definitely see that as a possibility. Um, but again, you know, his parents are going through a lot right now. And from what I can see, he had a decently good relationship with his parents and he did truly care about them. And um, I just don't think that anyone who cared for someone that much would be able to put them through that much pain. But again, that's totally just my opinion. There are people who think that this was just one big plan, that they, they knew he was just going to disappear. And that's why the girls were so calm. They knew they technically didn't do anything wrong. They knew that there was nothing bad happening. Um, he was just trying to maybe escape his life. It's just an absolutely crazy, mind-blowing case. There's just not enough facts in this case, and it drives me absolutely insane. Obviously, for the benefit of their search and finding him, they don't release absolutely every single bit of information, but I feel like this is just one question after another question after another question after another question, and there's so many different theories, and it's almost like there's not enough for any single one of those theories for me to believe any of them. It's one of the situations where as easily as a theory can be supported by a tiny bit of information that we're given, it can also be discredited by the same amount, if not more, information. So it's really hard, and I cannot imagine what the family is going through. They are posting and posting and posting, and trying to keep this story alive, and I'm hoping hoping in some way, shape, or form I can help them is fairly new. This only happened in August. There, This is fresh on many people's minds. People could have seen him if he was running away. You know, this is something that needs to be shared and needs to continue to spread. I think it's very unfortunate the way the police chose to relay the information that he had a history of abuse of drugs and alcohol. Um, Unfortunately, when people hear things like that, for some reason, they don't take the case as seriously and that is heartbreaking to me. I understand why the parents didn't originally include any of that information in their posts because, you know, for some unknown horrible reason, the second people hear that, they immediately assume, oh, well, they're just running around on drugs somewhere. Like, just because he had those decisions that he made in his past and things that he struggled with does not make him less of a person. It does not make his parents love him any less or miss him any less. It's not any less important to try to find him. Um, I think it's heartbreaking that that's the way they decided to tell the information because from the posts and the comments under, under the post, it was... People were upset and it did. You could tell it changed people's whole opinion and um, perspective on the case and potentially made a lot of people dismiss the case and maybe not put as much effort in, which I think is sickening. And I just really, really hope his family eventually gets answers. I have no idea out of all these theories what could have possibly happened. It's still so fresh and so early on and I'm hoping they uncover more information. Um, I honestly, 100% however, do believe that these girls know something. Their stories are so bizarre. 
I don't get how you leave a human being without food, water, or transportation on an empty piece of land and don't bring them food or anything for three days. Like, I do not understand it. So I hope both of these females are interrogated completely as hard as they possibly can be because I honestly think that they know something. Please let me know what you guys think down below. You guys suggested this case so much so much. This is one of my top suggested cases so far. I have received a ridiculous amount of emails and comments on this, so I'm really interested to see what you guys think about this case. I tried to bring in as much information as I possibly can. Unfortunately, there is not really a ton on this case online. You kind of have to rely on what the family is willing to share um, because the police aren't really speaking much on it and news outlets are not really speaking much on it. So let's do this family a favor. Let's share this information, spread this information, and please remember to be respectful in the comments. I don't care who you are. If you say something rude and disrespectful, I am immediately deleting your comment. The family, if they watch this, does not deserve to see that. Um, David does not deserve that, period. Um, the police department, they are trying, they might have had a slip up, but you know, they don't deserve being talked badly about. Just keep it nice in the comments below, share your theories with respect to everyone involved. I also want to make a quick announcement that I will be doing a You Now tomorrow night at 5 or 6 p.m. Go and follow me on any of my social media sites. I have a Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I will be announcing it across all of those, what time exactly I'll be doing it, but just expect a You Now tomorrow at around 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On that note, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Please make sure you check out all of my social media sites. I talk to you guys on there all the time and spread a ton, a ton, a ton of information, updates, um, cases I'm doing, ton of stuff. You guys should definitely go check it all out. Don't forget to subscribe and join our family. We are growing and I love you. Thank you so much for 50,000 subscribers. My mind's blown. Like at this point, I don't even know how to react anymore. <laughs> and yeah, so I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.